Thank you for joining us for CBN Newswatch. I'm Ephraim Graham. Ahead today, an international controversy over dramatic comments from Senator Chuck Schumer attacking Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and calling for new elections in Israel in the middle of its worst crisis since the Holocaust. We're going to hear what he said and bring you the reaction. Amid that political firestorm, Netanyahu promising to go into the last Hamas stronghold of Rafah and eliminate their last remaining battalions. Vice President Kamala Harris touring an abortion clinic showing how important the issue is to Democrats in this election year. And two new films turn a spotlight on rarely told stories on the brave, ordinary men during the time of World War II. See why actor Sir Anthony Hopkins is delivering hope with one life and then meet some American bombers who live to share their own World War II stories of bravery on screen for the world to see. Those stories and more are ahead today, right here on CBN Newswatch. This is CBN Newswatch. And we're going to begin in Israel, where government leaders are reacting to what some are calling an unprecedented call by Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer for new elections so Israelis can replace the coalition government of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. As Chris Mitchell reports from Jerusalem, the comments came as Israel prepares to finish off Hamas in its last stronghold in Rafah, in the midst of the worst crisis of the Jewish people that they face since the Holocaust. Speaking from the Senate floor Thursday, Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has lost his way and called for a change in Israel's government. By allowing his political survival to take the precedence over the best interests of Israel, the Netanyahu coalition no longer fits the needs of Israel after October 7th. The world has changed radically since then. Schumer's speech comes as a growing number of Democrats are urging the Biden administration to step up public pressure on Israel to halt its war on Hamas. Schumer charges Netanyahu's coalition consists of far-right extremists who have been too willing to tolerate the toll of the war on civilians in Gaza. Israel cannot survive if it becomes a pariah. Netanyahu responded in a statement saying, Israel expects Schumer to refrain from undermining the Israeli government. Israel's ambassador to the U.S., Michael Herzog, wrote on X, Israel is a sovereign country. It is unhelpful. All the more so as Israel is at war against the genocidal terror organization Hamas to comment on the political scene of a democratic ally. Former Israeli Prime Minister Niftali Bennett said, we are an independent nation, not a banana republic. Schumer's speech is especially surprising because of his past support for Netanyahu. In 2015, he was one of a few Democrats who voted against President Barack Obama's Iran deal and didn't speak out against Netanyahu for his speech to Congress criticizing the deal. Moments after the speech, Speaker of the House Mike Johnson slammed Schumer. It's just plain wrong for an American leader to play such a divisive role in Israeli politics while our closest ally in the region is in an existential battle for its very survival. The Jewish state of Israel deserves an ally that acts like one. Israel is not a colony of America whose leaders serve at the pleasure of the party in power in Washington. Only Israel's citizens should have a say and who runs their government. Several other Senate Republican leaders also blasted Schumer. Senator Lindsey Graham called it earth-shattering bad and said to Schumer, you've done a lot of damage, my friend, and you need to fix this. Senator Tom Cotton said Chuck Schumer should remove the log in his own party's eye before he whines about the speck in Israel's eye. In a more measured tone, Democratic Senator Ben Cardin said, as allies and friends, we must support the Israeli people in their efforts to shape their own destiny and chart the course of their post-war nation. In the meantime, the military campaign to defeat Hamas hinges on Israel entering Rafah, the last stronghold of the terrorist group in Gaza. Despite enormous pressure 
from the U.S. and other nations, Netanyahu pledges Israel will go on. I will continue to repel the pressures and we will enter Rafah. We will complete the elimination of the remaining Hamas battalions and we will restore security and bring absolute victory to the people of Israel and the state of Israel. Chris Mitchell joins us now with more. So let's, Chris, Chris, what is the reaction throughout Israel in the government and among the Israeli public to Schumer's remarks? Well, Ephraim, I would think uh, one of the questions they would say be, really? And, and now, uh, Israel's in the middle of a war. Many believe it's a war for their very survival. And, uh, and to have a leader of the Democratic Party there in the U.S. Senate make these statements, uh, I think some people over here believe he sounds more like the opposition party here in Israel and not the ally that the United States is. I think they see this as huge interference in Israeli sovereignty, uh, and Schumer and others in the Democratic Party may not like the current government, but a majority of Israelis did elect this government back in uh, December of 2023. Uh, Israelis, uh, the reaction, uh, Ephraim, is they want to win. And, uh, and actually, they're really not only wanting to win, but they're really hurting on so many levels. Yesterday afternoon, I had the opportunity to go to the center uh, that is supporting many of these hostage families and advocating for the release of the, uh, the hostages remaining in the Gaza Strip. Uh, I can tell you, Ephraim, I just felt this sense of pain and anguish among these families, obviously, but that reverberates throughout um, throughout this country and the society. And so I think Schumer's comments right now are very, uh, I, I think, very unwelcome here in, uh, in Israel, not only in the leadership, but the uh, people as well. Chris, Politico reports the Biden administration told Israel privately it would support a targeted <clears throat> military action in Rafah. How critical is it for Israel to go into Rafah, and what would a limited operation mean to the IDF? Well, the importance of going into Rafah, I would compare it sort of like the Allies uh, crossing the Rhine River in World War II to go into Germany. The war wasn't going to end if they didn't get into the heartland uh, of the, uh, the Nazi regime right there. Uh, for many, it means victory or defeat. It means either Hamas loses... Uh, and is defeated or it survives. And you may remember back in 2021, uh, there was about a 10-day war with Hamas. Uh, now, Israel inflicted a lot of damage on Hamas, uh, but it, uh, after that, uh, it, Hamas declared victory, not because it didn't l get damaged, but because it survived. Uh, what it also means, uh, uh, Ephraim, is that the IDF can't use all its resources, meaning they're going to have to do more, more, put more soldiers on the ground. And actually, uh, because of that, many may likely die. It means urban warfare, along with this tunnel warfare, is really a death trap for Israeli soldiers. And that's exactly how Hamas planned those tunnels uh, to be a buffer against, uh, against Israeli soldier. And it means also Hamas is going to use their strategy of human, human shield to a greater effect. Four battalions remain there in Rafa, according to all the reports we hear, and they're going to embrace, they're going to hug those maybe two million uh, uh, Gazans so they can be that human shields against those four remaining battalions. What's the difference between the war goals of Hamas and Israel at this point? Well, I heard something last night, uh, Efren, it was very, very insightful, I believe. Hamas has religious goals, and uh, they call their uh, operation on October 7th and beyond the Al-Aqsa flood, meaning, uh, meaning their goal is the Temple Mount here in Jerusalem. It's a religious goal. Uh, on the other hand, Israel has... Uh, their operation is called Iron Shields. It's the power of the IDF. It's a Zionist goal, but it's really not a spiritual or religious, even a biblical goal. Now, the way it was described to me is sort of like playing flag versus tackle football. When you come out on the field and you come out to play flag, flag football, but your opponent comes and plays tackle football, you're going to be playing tackle football. And uh, someone said it really explain, puts Israel at a disadvantage. They don't see this necessarily in the religious context that Hamas and other Islamic groups uh, do. That's why Hamas can say, we're not going to do it just once. We're going to do it over and over and over again because this is our religious passion, our fervor, our goal to defeat the Jewish state and make Jerusalem their capital, not the capital of the Jewish people. 
A uh, major family clan in Gaza says members of Hamas are now targets of assassination after Hamas executed their leader and 10 members because they supposedly said they might be part of a new administration in Gaza after the war. What role could the clans inside Gaza play the day after the war ends? Well, a lot of people say the clans could be a key to maybe uh, the day after this war. Uh, right now, it's a very dangerous thing for these uh, clans to be talking about what's happening. But uh, a lot of people here are thinking the clans might be the key to governance once Hamas is defeated there in the Gaza Strip. All right. Thanks a lot, Chris Mitchell, reporting for us from Jerusalem. Stay safe and know that we back here are praying for you and the entire team there in Israel. I want to remind you at home, you can see the latest Jerusalem Dateline tonight on the CBN News Channel. It begins at 8 Eastern. You can also watch it on the CBN News app or you can watch it on YouTube. Here at home, in a sign of how important abortion is for Democrats in this election year, Vice President Kamala Harris took a tour of an abortion clinic Thursday. We'll take a look at both sides of this key issue. We've got that story for you when we come back. You're watching CBN News Watch. A dramatic milestone Thursday, Vice President Kamala Harris visited an abortion clinic, the first time a president or vice president officially toured one of those clinics. Medical reporter Lori Johnson brings us the story. Calling it a health care clinic, Vice President Kamala Harris campaigned at a Minnesota Planned Parenthood facility where abortions are performed. She used it as an opportunity to slam lawmakers in other states who voted to limit abortion. How dare these elected leaders believe they are in a better position to tell women what they need? to tell women what is in their best interest. More than 20 states have passed laws banning or limiting access to abortion since the Supreme Court struck down Roe versus Wade. In six states, voters have approved ballot referendums protecting abortion. More are expected in November. We may see more campaign appearances at abortion centers as the Biden administration appears to consider this issue as a way to drive his supporters to the polls. Democrats are going to talk about abortion access as a key plank in this election. Uh, it motivates Democratic voters and it could help with independent voters. It's part of what the administration has dubbed its reproductive freedom tour. Some say the strategy could backfire. Polling shows that even pro-choice Democrats, though, do not um, approve of the extreme agenda that the Biden-Harris administration has, which is abortion up until uh, way later in pregnancy, up until the moment of birth, really. Um, also, that our taxpayers would pay, our tax dollars would pay for that. With so many challenges facing the country, voters may resent the fact that the Biden administration chose to go to an abortion center, not to our heavily compromised southern border, not to a grocery store where people can barely afford food, but to a place where children are killed on purpose. That's what they care about, Students for Life told CBN News. I honestly think it's just heartbreaking to, to see the vice president of the United States celebrating a clinic whose purpose is to take unborn lives. Rather than doing something concrete to help women who are facing these situations. Regent law professor Aaron Hawley says many Americans would rather see the Biden administration help women keep their babies. So instead of working to facilitate programs that help the unborn, that help mothers like pregnancy care centers do throughout this country, um, instead that they're celebrating uh, organizations that profit off of a baby's demise. Indeed, Harris's abortion clinic visit energizes pro-life voters. No other presidential administration has been as focused on promoting abortion as this one, the National Right to Life Committee said in a statement. And Americans United for Life said, we've seen pro-abortion politicians becoming increasingly brazen about their support for abortion. Kamala Harris's visit is about as bad as it gets. So while this is the first time a president or vice president campaigned at an abortion center, it may prove to have been a step too far. Lori Johnson, CBN News. 
Still ahead, two new films shine a bright light on the bravery of ordinary men during the time of World War II. You're going to meet a British stockbroker who risked his life to help more than 600 Jewish children escape Nazis. And then the real-life American bombers who inspired the Apple TV series Masters of the Air. We're going to hear from the filmmakers behind One Life and The Bloody Hundredth. An incredible piece of history hits the big screen today. One Life is based on the life of a British stockbroker who risked his life to help more than 600 Jewish children escape Nazis in Czechoslovakia in 1938, just before World War II. Sir Anthony Hopkins plays the role of Sir Nicholas Winton. And we have a Studio 5 sneak peek with the film's director and two members of the cast. Now, an extraordinary story about a man who rescued refugees at the mercy of Hitler's invasion. He was mortified knowing that they would all go to concentration camps. So he decided, heroically, without any fanfare, to rescue as many as he could. James, when did you first mm. discover Nicholas Winton's story? My second ever job in the industry was as a trainee researcher on That's Life, on the very program, the BBC show, that eventually brought Nicky Winton's story to the world. It was this old man who had saved my life and that of hundreds of others in the Second World War. And your first thoughts upon seeing it that first time, what did you think? Oh, the power of human emotion and also just honestly the power of human spirit. What do you think it is that motivated Nicholas? What drove him? He saw children that needed help needed saving. He saw something that needed doing. But instead of going the problems too big for any one individual to solve, he started off and did what he could. And hence the title from the saying from the Talmud, you save one life, you save the world. I have seen this and I cannot unsee it. And because I may be able to do something about it, I must. The casting, incredible. What was it like? How did you know that you wanted Sir Anthony Hopkins and the, the, the rest of the cast? How did that all play out? The first thing with Sir Anthony Hopkins was that he was the condition set by Nicky Winton's daughter for giving up the rights of the film. Do you ever think about the children and what happened to them? And Helena has such an indomitable spirit. She was just perfect to play uh, the, the ally, the, the door kicker in 1930s London that she does so well. Nikki, you must know we cannot save them all. You have to forgive yourself that. Helena, how would you describe the relationship, the mother-son relationship, if you will, between um, Babby uh, and Nicholas? Well, for me, um, I found it the most one of the most unusual. I'd never come across um, a mother-son relationship that's quite so dynamic. We're doing as much as we can. It's rare when you actually get asked to do a script where then you go like, oh, this could possibly, it means something, and it could make a difference to people's lives. Save one life, save the world. What about this story and project attracted you? Why was this something you wanted to do? I mean, there are very many reasons. I think the story in itself is obviously an incredible testament to the ability of human beings uh, to just be incredibly good. He kept a scrapbook, meticulously kept with all the names of the children. How much do you feel we know about what happened? Uh, and how much do you think this is going to be an introduction to many people about this piece of history? I met some Americans leaving Prague on the aircraft that we flew out on, saying to me that they just discovered the Holocaust. Um, and I found that uh, shocking. So if we introduce people to that bit of history and a crucial piece of our modern history, mm -hmm. and we understand what that means for humanity and the lessons we should learn from it, then that's vital. We are working to evacuate these children. Humanity has the capacity to be incredibly good and incredibly brave and incredibly modest and kind. And it feels like a gift to remind people of that. Mm. Um, so I just hope that as many people as possible see it. He was extraordinary and he was effective and he made change and his heart was in the right place. Mm. And he really needs to be known just, just to help everybody else feel not totally in despair at this time when frankly there aren't enough heroes um it's not history it's present and some people have talked about this as being a holocaust movie i i like to think of it as being 
that and and different in that it is uplifting. I hope that an audience will come out of the theatres feeling they've seen what, what one individual can do. They've seen the power of, of human survival. Can I ask, is there anyone in the audience tonight who owes their life to Nicholas Winton? If so, could you stand up, please? Incredible film. Another wartime story is being released today. The Bloody Hundredth begins streaming on Apple TV Plus just in time for the series finale of its series, Masters of the Air. This documentary takes audiences back to World War II and tells the real life stories of the men who inspired the series. It also explores the significance of the bomber, which was also known as the Flying Fortress. Actor Tom Hanks serves as the film's narrator. One of these groups suffered so many casualties, it became known as the Bloody Hundred. These men don't forget these missions. They, I mean, I interviewed two of them uh, uh, who were 100 and 101 at the time. Wow. John Lucky Lucky was 100 and Bob Wolf was 101. And, you know, they may forget some of the mundane things that happen on a, you know, a given Tuesday if they're not flying that particular day, but they do not forget those missions. Mark Herzog directs the film, and again, the film is streaming today on Apple TV+. Stay with us. We'll be right back with an encouraging word for your day ahead. Get your daily quick start from CBN News. A quick read on the important news of the day delivered right to your inbox. Stay current on breaking news, politics, and entertainment. Go to quickstart.news and subscribe today. Time for your Friday Faithful. I'll leave you with these three simple words. I've said them before, but they are certainly worth repeating. God is faithful. He never leaves. He never forsakes. And he never forgets. God is faithful. With those three words, make this day, today, a fabulous Friday. And be sure to have yourself a wonderful weekend. Well, that will do it for this edition of CBN News Watch. Remember, you can always find more of our news programs on the CBN News Channel. You can find them there at any time. You can also find them online. That address is cbnnews.com. Take a moment, let us know what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can email us, newswatch at cbn.com. You can also reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We certainly would love to hear from you. Again, I encourage you. Fabulous Friday, wonderful weekend. We'll see you right back here come Monday. Goodbye and God bless.